Modern crocodilians are the ultimate survivors. No, they haven't remained unchanged since the time of the dinosaurs. The modern crop of crocodilians are relatively modern survivors. They once enjoyed a much greater diversity and range. Contrary to the living fossil label slapped on these hunky, crusty creatures, they have changed in so many ways over the last couple hundred million years. Historically, interpreting the diets of the many shapes and sizes of extinct crocodiliforms was difficult and without direct evidence. The diet was inferred from the characteristics of the tufers and the skull. There were sometimes occasional bite marks left in bones of prey items, which would suggest a crocodiliform culprit. Most of these inferences have been made with the largest crocodiliforms to ever live, critters like Dinosuchus and Sarcosuchus. A fun example is the recently named Ogersuchus, which was found in a dinosaur nesting site. It was inferred to have preyed upon the dinosaur hatchlings due to corroboration from tooth marks. Undeniable evidence of dinosaur munching behavior among non-dinosaurs is rare, but has been found. A snake had a sauropod hatchling in its gut, and the early mammal Repenomammus had a Cetacosaurus chick in its gut as well. Despite all of these examples, direct crocodiliform gut contents of dinosaur remains have been incredibly rare. In fact, most croc gut contents are rare. This is because crocs have extremely acidic stomach acid that dissolves the vast majority of the stuff they gobble. They very rarely squish out full-on bones or even bone chunks from their cloacas. I said it's rare, not that it never happens. A giant, predatory Baudusukid croc was found in Brazilian late Cretaceous rocks with another croc in its gut, and carbonized remains were found inside the skeleton of a very young croc from Eocene, Wyoming. Now, a brand new paper was published in February of 2022 on not only a brand new croc from Cretaceous Australia, but a brand new specimen of a dinosaur within a croc. This is the first direct evidence of dinosaur munching in crocs. A crew from the Australian Age of Dinosaurs Museum was out in Eldersley Station, a pastoral lease that operates as a sheep and cattle station in Wintonshire in central western Queensland, Australia, on an exploratory excavation expedition trying to get a hold of some poorly preserved sauropod remains. These remains were exposed on the surface, but once they started digging some more around and under the bones, another distinct layer of bluish-gray volcanic clay with some sandstone bits was uncovered. Smack dab at the transitional layer between the gray stuff and the not gray stuff was a big-ass concretion. A concretion being a hard, compact mass of matter formed by a precipitation of mineral cement within the spaces between particles. In other words, some nucleus gathers minerals around it until it snowballs into a large, hard mass of rock. They took the concretion back to the Australian Age of Dinosaurs Museum and prepared it to the best of their abilities. Turns out, this concretion held the front half of the skeleton of a croc. The bones were articulated, which means all the bones were aligned as they were when the animal died, instead of scattered or rearranged into a messy pile. All told, the specimen consists of a skull, some of the forelimbs, and big chunks of the neck and back vertebrae, as well as a ton of osteoderms. It cannot be entirely ruled out that this croc was scavenged before burial and fossilization, as the back half of the body is missing, but no definitive proof of posthumous carcass processing was found. Researchers from the museum named it Confractosuchus soroctonos. Confracto meaning broken, and Sucus croc. The species name comes from Soros for lizard and Ktonos for killer, making this beast the lizard-killing broken crocodile. Since some of the bones were covered by matrix, the specimen was thrown in a neutron tomography imaging station at the Australian Nuclear Science and Technology Organization in New South Wales. Once they got the scans back, they could analyze the slices and reform a lot of the stuff in 3D modeling programs, like ZBrush. This neutron scanning found that the remains of a small ornithopod dinosaur were inside the stomach region of Confractosuchus. Bam, a two for one. Obviously, the bones of the ornithopod aren't complete enough to give a solid identification to, but the research team made comparisons with the digging ornithopod of the American West, Oryctodromius. 
How do the researchers know that the bones were actually in the croc's gut, rather than the croc just dying over top of another animal? First of all, the bones are exactly within the skeleton of the croc. There's rather little doubt in the association of the dinosaur bones and croc bones. On top of that, the bones were crushed, snapped apart, and had tooth marks etched into them. This corroborates the hypothesis that they are the remains of Confractosuchus dinner. Oddly, the bones are not heavily acid etched as they would be if they had remained in the croc's gut for any long period of time. Since crocs have some of the strongest stomach acids in the animal kingdom, the croc must have died very shortly after ingesting the little dinosaur. Finally, the first definitive and direct proof that crocs ate dinosaurs. What's funny is that this wasn't even one of the weird terrestrial crocs with the long legs and ginormous teeth people have assumed ate dinosaurs. This isn't even the school bus sized monsters that broke the scales and had to have eaten dinosaurs to have enough energy to live. Confractosuchus was pretty much just a prehistoric tweak on the body plan modern crocs have taken. The researchers refer to Confractosuchus as Breverostrin, which is a term describing a shortened snout. Confractosuchus did have a much shorter snout when compared to the gharials or crocodiles. The shape of the skull was definitely closest to crocodiles with a sharply pointed triangular shape, but also compares rather well to caimans and gators, though it was technically only distantly related to all of them. Based on the preserved remains, Confractosuchus is expected to have reached about 2.5 meters (8.2 feet) in length. This is in line with the sizes and anatomy of many modern generalist crocs. Despite its dinosaurian last meal, Confractosuchus teeth and jaws suggest it wasn't a dinosaur specialist and would have taken any prey items that were near it. So, what kind of croc was Confractosuchus? Based on all of the characteristics preserved in the animal's bones, the researchers found that Confractosuchus associated most closely with the Susisuchids and the Hyleochampsids. This makes Confractosuchus an early branching member of the clade called Eusuchia. This is the group to which all modern crocs belong, plus a few groups of now extinct crocs that mostly adapted to similar body plans as modern crocs. Eusuchia nests within the larger group, Neosuchia. One of the key transitions in crocodiliform evolution is the transition between the Neosuchians and the Eusuchians, as it represents the evolution of the modern croc body plan. This transition centers squarely upon the simultaneous evolution of special holes in the nasal passages and the evolution of Procelus vertebrae which are vertebrae that have a concave ball on the back that fits into a concave socket on the front. Confractosuchus shows that the evolution of Procelus vertebrae didn't happen all at once throughout the skeleton as it only had Procelus vertebrae in the neck bones. The research team thinks this indicates some kind of structural advantage to the evolution of this type of vertebrae in this part of the body first. The closest relatives to Confractosuchus, the Susisuchids, lacked the special Procelus vertebrae and had unfused armor. This forced them to remain small and restricted their range of movement on land. Modern crocs have the special vertebrae as well as vertebral spines that stick directly sideways. This provides extreme structural support for them to be big, to walk around on land for long periods of time, to brace themselves for impacts, and be flexible in the water. If the special vertebrae first evolved in the neck, like in Confractosuchus, then this means the neck was getting the brunt of forces and needed to be reinforced the most. With this, it can be hypothesized that Confractosuchus was an aquatic ambush-style predator with greater flexibility and strengthened neck for dispatching and dismembering struggling prey, like the dinosaur in its gut. Confractosuchus was pulled from a layer of rock called the Winton Formation, which dates to the Cenomanian stage of the Cretaceous period, roughly 92 to 104 million years ago. This means the croc was living with a huge diversity of strange beasts that had been isolated in Australia for millions of years. Australovenator, a pointy-snouted, meat-hooked megaraptorid theropod, stalked the marshes, while huge titanosaurian sauropods like Australotitan, Wintonatitan, Diamantinosaurus, and Savannosaurus pushed down trees, smushed footprints into the soft mud, and tilled the soil. 
the Iron Dragon, Pharaoh Draco, soared the skies and picked up fish and lizards, while ankylosaurs battled each other for dominance, and small ornithopods tried to escape the jaws of crocodiles, like our brand new friend, Confractosuchus. This place was rather similar to the swamps and marshes of the Florida Everglades of today, and the discovery of crocs like Confractosuchus continues to prove that. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks goes to my elephant tier patrons, Thea Svensson, Staniforth Hopkins, Dinosaur, Chris Frampton, Biotaverse, Arda Bayer, and Christoph Hubbinger, as well as my Tyrannosaur patrons, Iron Bladesman, Henry Brennan, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.